dark times whose kindness made us care. His wares were widely sought with acts of fortitude. He did it for Hutton, he did it for Goose. He traveled with his trade. To all kinds of venues, sitting for hours to craft trinkets for you, raising many coins for our charities. And so cries the pitcher, I do this for thee. Toss a coin to the pitcher, hat and dies of plenty, hat and dies of plenty. Oh. Toss a coin to your pitcher, attendees of plenty. At this ECM, the legend shall return. We all must engage him, of this you shall learn. You shape your desires, treasures they will flow. With colors a plenty, so give him a go. Ah, Twenty-five of your own pounds, he'll do your bidding. He will make you your dog tag, so throw him your coin. Charities will help the best in all the lands. They are special effect and the hearing goes. Oh. Toss the coin to the pitcher. Toss a coin to the pitcher, attendees of plenty, attendees of plenty. Oh. Toss a coin to your pitcher, a friend of you guarantee, a friend of you guarantee. Oh. Toss a coin to your pitcher, a friend of humanity. The deck of the Gnosis retracts into the hull, carrying with it an ancient anaconda, its hull pitted and dented, its paint worn with time. The instant the docking clamps engage, robotic systems from the megaship start unloading the precious cargo and two figures descend the passenger elevator and make their way across the vast docking bay. My gin! Leo, why are they taking all of my precious gin? It's the payment. Why couldn't they take money instead, damn it? Oh, my precious gin. It's the only way they could get large quantities of Alpha Centauri Mega Gin. Why can't they just make their own? They do, but Dr. Arcanon has particular tastes and he knows what they put in it. Oh, yes. Bog Spaniel. These boffins are a strange lot. The door opens to reveal a huge space with ranks of vats extending into the distance. In the foreground, a group of scientists are busy, bent over their monitors and instruments, oblivious to the visitors. Through here. Ahem. <clears throat> I'll see you, fool. Can I help you? Hello. Hello. Can I help you? Well, it's worse than I thought. Usually I'm seeing double, but now there are twelve of the grumpy buggers. Six, sir. You are seeing double. There are six of them. Clones, by the look of it. Which one of you is LCU? No, I I'm I'm LCU. Could you stop doing that? It's making my head wobble. I'm looking for LCU, no fool like one. He's not well, a don't lack it, it, is he's here. You! You there with the turkey baster thingy. Who are you? I'm LCU, no fool like three. Well, where's the other one? Why are there so many of you? One. Apparently he was far too busy to work on your order, so he had us cloned. He's probably at the gin bar or lost in an escape pod. Well, never mind, I have your gin. All five hundred and ninety-ninety tons of it. I know, I know, you wanted six hundred tons, but we had a... Uh, 
a little incident. Had to scoop it all up with my mug. Ha <laughs> ha! Mug! Six hundred tons of gin in the hall. Six hundred tons of gin. If one ton of gin should fall. Mug! Anyway, I digress. What does that button do? Don't, Don't touch, touch it. it! Sorry, that button looks so friendly. So, I have your gin, or at least most of it. Do you have my clones? Yes, of course. Exactly as specified. We took the hair sample and produced 600 clones. Come and have a look at this one. They're all identical. Oh, that's not right. What do you mean? Well, Alvin is shorter and has a lot more hair. This doesn't look like Alvin at all. Look at his face. Well, am I right? That appears to be a snozwell. Six hundred snozwells? This just won't do. What are we going to do with 600 snozwells? You must have given us the wrong hair. You're, you're still going to have to pay for them. No, no refunds. What do you do with them? You can't let them all get loose. It's okay. We can liquidate them and reuse the material. You can't liquidate them? This is monstrous. It's perfectly fine. They're not alive until we press the button to start the boot sequence. This button here? It was winking at me. I, I had to push it. Oh, no. Do you know what you've done? You've started the boot sequence. They're alive. All our mics alive? Good evening once again from Hutton Orbital. This is your weekly roundup of the news from around the galaxy. I'm Rudolf Hucker. I'm Harry Balzac, and other than just hanging around, I've got the running order for the show. And it tells me that we've got another Encyclopedia Galactica later in the show from the pen of Commander Wotherspoon. I'm Wilma Fingerdoo, and I'll be asking Flossie for this week's sports reports. I'm Roger Vatt, and I'm this evening's Stunt Snockers, bringing you up to date with everything in Hutton Systems. And I'm Norma, and without Lou here this evening, I put away my pan. Don't worry, I can get it out again if I need. And I'll be asking Amelia Hawke what she's got her teeth into this week. All that, plus the sky tonight, looking upward and outward, and telling us things we didn't know about the galaxy around us. But first, the headlines. You had me kill the bong. <laughs> I that killed one. the bong. You told me to kill the bong. I killed the bong. Wrong bong. No bong. Beams up. No bong. Beams up. Thanks to Scotty. So long. Sing song. Ding dong. A piece of history from when size really did matter. Is it Groundhog Day again already? Has anyone seen this man? Canon shows how you can swipe right right into another body. Norma tells me I have to stand in for Lou tonight. I've been uncovering what everyone's up to. First, this evening, in the world of space engineering, there are few icons as well respected, fictional or otherwise, than the great Montgomery Scott. Icons of the worlds of science, mathematics and engineering have had theorems, equations and methods named after their way of doing things. Pythagoras invented the original Mark III Cobra design, Euclid the dodecahedron space station, Murphy, the mission system that spawns trips to Hutton, but the great Scott. Okay, he was actually Canadian, 
but was a whiz with accents amongst his many skills, invented the engineer's best friend. Creative estimating, also known as buffer time. Unlike many galactic operating systems which estimate time remaining based on a combination of divination, dowsing and sticking their finger in the air, creative estimating uses the very sound principle of telling someone demanding your best spanner work that it'll take two hours on the basis they needed in one and then actually competing it in 30 minutes leaving enough time for a glass of scotch, some haggis and a quick lap of the deck whilst playing your bagpipes. All to the cheers of everyone who you've just saved. This principle can be seen in action over in Colonia. When engineers first arrived, hot on the heels of Jacques and his Crientian stills, their repertoire was limited. Yes, they could breathe on your dirty drives, spit and polish your beam laser and maybe give your little limpets a tiny tickle, but that was about it. Never fear, the engineers told us. Keep engineering your gear with us and we'll get better over time. The quantum wasn't actually defined other than to say it was more than soon and less than ages. Pilots living on Colonia have plugged the gap by making occasional spanner tourism trips back to the bubble to put a little more poke in their asp or trim some of the excess from their mass by drilling holes in everything. Quietly, in the background, Operation Montgomery Scott has been beavering away, yes, that's both a Scottish and Canadian creature, forcing the engineers to work tirelessly on improvement after improvement like some brogue-accented Mr Miyagi. Blueprint on, blueprint off. Ages became later. Later became soon. Soon became immediately and imminently morphed into now. Yes, Marsha Hicks from the Tier System has been the latest colonic engineer to announce an upgrade, taking her knowledge of frag cannons all the way up to Grade 5. Yes, with 1.6 million attempts out of 1.8 million, the bunch of fives you can now get over at Colonia include Etienne Dawn with life support, power distributors, power plants, sake sensors, wake scanners, plasma accelerators and sneeze cannons all up at Grade 5. Marsha with collector and prospector lint pit controllers, fuel scoops, frag and multi cannons. Mel Brandon with everything from thrusters and frame shift to shields and energy weapons, though it should be noted that due to a trademark dis debate, shield banks can't currently go as high as skills indicate. And Petra with hull improvements, Tamas and sneaker missile racks rounding out the availability. For the combat pilot, there are even engineering recipes that are only available in Colonia now. Yes, buffer time is up and we're into overdrive, courtesy of the engineers and, of course, Montgomery Scott. Following on from last week's report about a potential transformation of the last night of the mug's rendition of For the Mug, into the humming chorus from Madame Butterfly by leaving out the words, we are pleased to report that the matter has finally been settled. The reassurance that we gave our listeners last week was actually warranted for once, and we have had confirmation in writing, albeit writing but was slightly shaky and using a rather un unusual shade of wax crayon, that a flash mob of up to three people plus one man in an office down the corridor will be tasked with singing something approximating the correct words at the appropriate time. The organisers took the pains to point out the confusion about whether the words for the mug were to be sung originally arose because their only copy of the full set of lyrics had been misplaced. Misplaced in this case to line the bottom of the conductor's pet Ling Lang's cage. The disappointing thing is that the attendance has been limited to hollow me's exclusively, so the only people who will know or care if you sing the correct words or just gaze at the screen laughing at all of the ridiculous outfits will be the people in your own home, as always. Code warriors everywhere are going glassy-eyed in wonder at some unearthed technology this week. 
And we don't mean the piratical kind and the kind of ocular implant that hides under their eye patch. Years after the discovery of Commander Jameson's crashed Cobra Mark III, first edition, archaeologists uncovered a hitherto unseen data stick backup of ship software wedged in the runners of the pilot's chair. Whilst inroads have been made into rediscovering some of the earliest history of human-thargoid interaction, which as far as we can tell was punctuated by pew pew and more than a little boom, the actual ship software as installed was corrupted on landing, giving no insight into the Thargoids' misjumps, the little fuckers that they launched, and how they compare to modern hyperdictions and Thargoid variants. With the programming skills required to squeeze an entire ship's flight system, trading computer, life support management, and of course galactic map into one ancient data stick, complete with moving parts and a pencil for rewinding it should it all get tangled, long since forgotten, it's taken archaeocodologists ages to turn all the hexadecimal into something that they could read. Project leader Commander Moxon has been at the forefront of these discoveries, revealing detailed schematics of the system's Space Kruger lightfast motors, the Iricon through space drives, Zyman shield generators, and of course the Sin Pleasure relaxer pads that were standard on the old iron ass herself. The Cowell and McGrath shipyards at Lave, original manufacturing facility for the Mark III, lost all records of the original specification, but after tireless untangling of the machine code, Moxon is now able to compare which space jump technology with the more modern and safer frameshift drive systems. In a surprising reveal, he also managed to unearth IFF data on a number of long-missed ships from the galaxy. Gone from even the Tonisla ship graveyard, the Gecko, Boa, and of course, Moray Starboat. He has supplied information to the major ship manufacturers under a GPL license in the hopes that next year's license for atmospheric landings will herald a new era in shipbuilding and bring back some classic designs. At Hutton, as a bunch of crusty old relics ourselves, we can only applaud the pilot's determination to unearth the history of spaceflight and resurrect some of these classic designs. After Hutton News exclusively broke the story of the breakout at the Dastardly Don's Menagerie last week, we understand that members of the Pilots' Federation now have the situation under control not without a little struggling. Security camera footage from their offices over in Shinrata have seen a number of their best battling the monster and bringing him under control. The investigative team dispatched to the Don's home system dodged the dinosaurs, eschewed the zoo and skipped the queues for the runaway mine train and went straight for his labs, hoping to catch him in the act of doing something so nefarious, so bad so evil that they would have no choice but to up his notoriety by one and steal all his tasty cargo. What they discovered in the abandoned lab had them reaching for their 1980s film library to work out what a groundhog was, whether time cops was a thing, and of course looking over their shoulders for time bandits. Yes, the Don appears to have decided to live his life 25 seconds at a time, refining his dastardly deeds in an infinite loop in the hopes of achieving evil perfection before the batteries ran out on his time machine. Documents indicate that he's been working with the Ratloop Corporation and between them they built a Lemnis Gate, a devastating galactic pun-powered portal that leverages the science behind Lemniscate loops. Yes, the Mobius strip strikes back. When will the Don return from his never-ending loop? When will he have gone the full fruit loop in the process or mended his wicked ways? Is this the vaunted time stone that lets Doctor Strange give heroes the finger? Was 25 seconds all it took? to stop our very own loose knockers from achieving a record Hutton run? 
we don't know. But as our reporters have got a loopy Lemniscate hangover and can't tell if they're coming or going, it will take us a while to work out what the heck's going on. All we can tell is that in the Don's world, space legs are a thing. But you can only enjoy them 25 seconds at a time. Listeners are asked to check all of their sheds, outbuildings, ship hangars, planetary bases, SRV cockpits and cargo holds. Especially if the latter was full of Centauri Megagen the last time you looked. Cecil B. Trumpington, our vagabond venophile, our drifting dipso, our itinerant Nibirit, has gone missing. Again. Cecil was last seen asleep in the cockpit of his new crate Mark II that he acquired during a poker game with three of King Hanky's clones and a heavily disguised Leia Wolf. Rumours that he had arranged the poker game as an excuse to meet with the progenitor in private had been denied and hints that he might have gone all in have elected nothing but red-faced silence. Cecil's ship was transported back to the bubble aboard a fleet carrier But on arrival, the usual announcement of end of line, all change, all change, and the onion head advert, see it, say it, snort it, echoed around in vacant crate cockpit. A a trail of empty gym bottles aboard the fleet carrier led to an empty docking bay that smelled strongly of olives, so our hope is that Cecil made it safely to another ship that was departing. So if you've noticed that look on your cocktail cabinet has been forced, or you've heard a faint cry of cheers, dear boy, from a distant corridor, please get in touch with the local branch of the RSPCA. That's the really sozzled, peripatetic Cecil Association. For many a pilot, close encounters of the graphitic... I'm going to start that one again, put my teeth back in. For many a pilot, close encounters of the gravitic kind tend to come about through inattention. Luckily... Space is big. You wouldn't believe... Okay, you've all heard the line. It's enormous, and most of it is empty space. However, dotted around the place are balls of gas, big sucky holes, bad Kevin Costner movies, and, of course, space potatoes. These planets have a gravitic effect all of their own. Unconnected to the science, unaffected by distance, they attract objects that make their way under their own propulsion with the sole purpose of causing them to crash. Canon and Interstellar, however, are more concerned with some strange side effects when traditional F equals little g, little m, big M over R squared mixes with this dark force, and a rare but observable two-body problem. Having adapted some complicated calculators and upgraded them with snippets of code nicked from a few dating websites they no longer have profiles on, the boffins have been investigating the two-body interaction of massive objects in a project called Rhubarb and custard. Commander LCU, no fool like one, has taken his dating algorithm and can now predict with total accuracy whether two bodies will meet, attract, and on a regular basis merge, before parting again only to come back for seconds at a fixed interval later in a gigantic galactic dating dance of mammoth proportions. For more information on his calculations, so you... For more information on his calculations, so you can go the full peeping Tom on the damage-proof collisions, you can go to the Galnet website canon.interstellar. Next on his agenda, the three-body problem, fraught with ethics and of course blocked by many a family-safe filter. LCU will be hunting for galactic threesomes that are sure to boggle the mind. He's, 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 <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Hello, mates. Lou's trusted me with a BGS update this week, and I'm really stoked about it. I never realised that becoming a custodian would bring a shot of this kind of fame. 
At the tip of the influence, there's been a bit of a spurt in light and 145141, and steady swelling in PSPF LF2 and Wolf124. I'm sure the custodians are getting on top of these, so I expect to see them getting it nice and solid by the time Lou gets back. Remember, anything over 55, and Lael starts to turn her nose up. Checking out the bottom, Ross671 could do with a bit of a prod, and Wolf25 has been gradually drooping, so that could do having a bit extra pumped in it. If that sounds good to you lovely truckers. After a shaky start, a touch of the old electile dysfunction you might say, we surged to a climactic victory in LP53281. Glory to his fluffiness. So you don't need to tell me that we could do with making a post-election thrust in there to prevent a resurgence by our opposing factions is our top priority right now. Of course, I am telling you because that's my job for tonight and I want to make a good impression. <laughs> so I get asked back. But I know I don't need to. I think not now. Over in Colonia, it's more of the same. We're not far off an election in Tyr. We're trying to ignore that. We're even in Pythias, and we're sitting pretty in Eel Procol Centauri and Dariso. So maybe a little boost in those two systems. But apart from that, just keep making money however you see fit. Now, I shall hand you over to the beautiful Norma. I don't know how she puts up with Lou's filth, to be honest. He must be an absolute angel. Firstly, for our French-speaking pilots, the Grand Tournament 3306 take place on September the 7th, 9th, 11th, 12th and 13th. There are a wide range of events, such as races and SRV combat. Details are at Remlock in dash industries dot fr slash grand that's g r a n d s dash tonar that's t o u r n o i s dash thirty three o six. I'm sure somebody will paste that into the chat. Continuing the international theme for Japanese speaking commanders, there's the Fighter One Galactic Championship organised by Jasper Amulet, which had its first event in November last year. This is an event for ship-based fighter jets. The six types of plane that can compete are Taipan, Imperial Fighter, Condor, Trident, Javelin and Lance. Details are in the forums and our short link for this one is bit.ly slash fighter one galactic. That's all one word, fighter number one, galactic. We have information on an event which has already started, Real Men Race in Lederhosen, from Alec Iron Bucky Turner. The race, hosted by Commander Ashnak, is something quite unique, a race where you have to gauge in advance how fast you think you're going to be and pick your launch time accordingly. Details are in the Buckyball Racing Club 3306 Discord channel and in the forums and we have a quick link bit.ly slash realmenrace Those Buckyballers never do things by halves. They're also helping to organise the Colonia Speedrun. Get from Buckyball's home station of Rebuy Prospect to Jack Station in Colonia. There are prizes of Steam gift cards and shift paint jobs up for grabs and the competition runs up to midnight Pacific Standard Time on September the 13th. Details in the forums and our short link is bit.ly slash colonia speedrun. Lawmaster Drew Wager is starting a new tour of the part of the galaxy that you cannot afford to miss. Drew will regale you with tales of old when the galaxy was young and show you sights and sights of interest. Start October the 1st, 8pm UK time. That's 7pm game time. Our short link for this one is bit.ly slash astrotour by Drew. And talking of community information, don't forget to tune in to Live Radio every Tuesday. And finally, news on turning the wheel. 
They expanded out of Enyan Wu into LTT 5455. Immediately upon the expansion cooldown period, HR 4979 expanded as well, as they had it above 75% the whole time. They landed in LTT 5455 and immediately won their invasion in a sweet fall to nothing. The next day they initiated war for second place. They have a game plan in place to take control of LTT 5455 within a week, with the obvious four day delay for the war, and will look to expand one more time which should take them to their target system to test Capital Saul. They are currently shaping the HR 4979 expansion to make sure that it's in the direction of Lave. And that's all the community news I have from the community this week. If you know of any upcoming events that you'd like us to mention, please get in touch. Hutton Orbital Spaceways would like to apologise for the late arrival of the inbound service from Seoul. Grandchildren of the passengers originally waiting for the service are advised the boarding will commence from Bay 2. Travellers are advised not to keep their in-cabin sunbed switched on for the duration of the journey to the station for medical reasons. For those of you craving excitement during the journey to Hutton Orbital, Channel 16 has a live feed of grass growing in a field, and Channel 17, a live feed of rock weathering away. On Channel 14, our classic audio story for the journey is War and Peace. And we're back. Hello, good evening everybody and welcome to Hutton Orbital Live. Yes, that was the news. And joining us in the studio this evening, we, we have a, a bevy of presenters. Uh, we have our very special guest, Commander Kinrain. Good evening, Commander Kinrain. Oh, I've broken him again. Somebody take the gaffer tape off the Kinrain. Good evening. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm paranoid about don't, my dog and then forgot I put it on mute. <laughs> don't 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 apologize. That was just Alvin in the background, I'm sure, just barking at your your excellent um stand in stand in duties for, for loose knockers who has taken a, a leave of absence this evening. But um, no, thank you very much for coming to join us this evening, uh, Commander Kenray. Oh, it's a pleasure. All the way from the banter bus. You've you've made a stop off over at Hutton Orbital, especially to come and uh, you know, plug the gap, so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. And is it is it the first time you've read the news as well? I know you've been on as a guest many, many times. Is it the first time you've actually had to read the news? <laughs> The first time I've ever read the news, and it was nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it shouldn't Not be that how... bad. I mean, I you know, <clears throat> the, the the words just sort of you know flash from brain to page and from page to <laughs> page to mic. So, oh, so what do you reckon on your your article this evening? For the mug, oh, that... brilliant. Reinstated. Brilliant. The yes. lyrics. <laughs> Absolutely, really, really great. So there was a there was a few there was a furore over well. uh, over over the um, the lack of lyrics at the the last <laughs> night of the mug this year. So we're glad it's come back again, along along with uh, other notable tunes such as Pew 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 Pew, pew the Ferdelance, and things like that. <laughs> the problem is now is I've got the butterfly chorus in my head. I've got an earworm now, so. Well, the the earworms are now out in the wild. If I, I, I haven't checked recently as to whether the earworms are behaving themselves we might have to have a look while we're on air as to whether operation earworm is holding firm or whether we've uh yeah we're back to oh my goodness the earworms are going to be off the market sometime soon so we, we ought to check on that in a minute but um and uh, well we'll come back and sort of talk to you again in in a bit more but we've also got commander flossy hello flossy good evening Hello, sorry, I was on you the keyboard then. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, you know, I solved all of the other technical problems. These ones I can't fix. I'm, I, I'm, it, well, I'm so happy that we don't have that horrible lag between us now. That during during the bongs, I actually managed to pour an entire pint of Guinness all down my front. 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm now wearing Guinness. Luckily, I absorbed a lot, so my, my shirt, my trousers, and absolutely everything are now beautifully Guinness flavoured. But um, <laughs> no, it, it's nice to have you back again. It's five years now, Flossie. We're over the five year mark. We are, aren't we? Yeah, I can't believe it's been so long. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've been here for every single one of the shows, or if it isn't, it's certainly uh, 99%. Most of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I would say about 99%, yeah. I wasn't the very first ones, I don't think. So, yes, from Commander Eddie Lee Wise and Sons, plus my daughters, David's gotten all wet. Yes, yes, I'm a bit soggy now. <laughs> um, it's a really good thing we don't have the, the webcams and the Zoom stuff live for those watching on Twitch as well, because it would be a horrible sight right now. Um Anyway, what a lot of links, says Commander Wotherspoon. Yes, that was a lot of links, because there's a lot of news from Flossie. So, Flossie, there's a load of things going on that you've been talking about, or your your um, sound-alike Norma has been talking about. It's, yeah. It's busy out there in the galaxy. It certainly is, yes. And I thought it'd be so busy with, you know, without the community goals. It seems to be... There's no time for them. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of racing going on. I think racing seems to be filling the gap at the moment, obviously. And, of course, it's lovely to see some of the international uh, news out there. So, obviously, it know, the, is, yeah. the French team with their, their Grand Tournoi 3306. Um, a bit like the Tour de France, but Tour de Space or something similar. <laughs> um, and then we've got, obviously, the Japanese-speaking commanders. It's the first time we've featured something from uh, from the, you know, the Japanese teams who, uh, who who play and race over an elite. And um, it is actually open to everybody. You don't need to speak Japanese. Their, their broadcasts and their <laughs> streams are in Japanese. You can always take part, even if you don't. Um, but the link was up there in the chat. As Commander Wotherspoon says, what a lot of links. Yes, there was a link for that one as well. Bit.ly slash Fighter One Galactic. Not your sort of thing, though, is it? The fighting. Fighting? No, no, definitely not. No. no. And and, and then we, we've had a sort of an inquiry as to the real men raid, racing lederhosen. That's the ladies as <laughs> well. <laughs> really? <laughs> for those wondering. Yes. In fact, it's open well, to everyone. Well, I must admit, I did wonder about that. Well, it's it's real pilots racing lederhosen. <laughs> Whoever the pilot is, <laughs> yes. Like, it, it's like, only a phrase. It's it's meant ironically. You know. Like, like Jürgen the Bavarian Bear and friends and Alec Iron Bucky Turner. Yep. Um, but the Buckyball Racers are one of the most active groups. In, I mean, obviously, Hutton, we get up to loads and loads of stuff, but the, the events that um, Alec Turner puts on, the frequency of them, there is something every single week if you enjoy racing. And the um, the Buckyball Racing Discord channel is actually a great place. If, you, if you've never tried racing with these guys, some of them are, I mean, legends. How they go those speeds, I have no idea. But it's a good laugh just so you get yourself on video getting blown up, smashing into things. So, um, you know, it is really, really worth it going to the Buckyball Racing Discord channel. Um, and then, mm. of course, yeah, the, the other thing, the race to Colonia. Well, I, yeah. I mean, where did they find the time? I know it's all during lockdown. Moment, but, um, and then, of course, Drew, Drew Wager. I mean, we all know Drew very well. We've met oh, yes. Drew many, many times at lots of live events. Talking of live events, there will be news coming soon, brackets trademark, maybe in the next four weeks about a revival for ECM next year. But we can't give any details yet. We have to wait four weeks until we know Ooh. what's going on. Um, but Drew Wager... Um, is doing another tour of the galaxy. I mean, he, he is a sort of self-styled law master, I suppose, of the elite universe. Yeah. And he, he likes telling stories. So, so does. He's written a good few. But Baz, yeah, I mean, you can you you can you can say to Commander Kinrain, you can say to Drew, yeah, we got there first. Didn't didn't your banter tour go to the Inra sites and some of the um, some of the story based sites out there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we had 26 consecutive days of going to these sort of sites and uh, still going out every Sunday. So, well, it might uh, still be worth tuning in for the things that you missed that make you wish you'd gone back. Absolutely. And and, and then, of course, um, obviously we're going to move along to the next presenter. Um, the, the Harry Ballsack, also known as Commander Palantir. Good evening. We, we, we wrapped ourselves on the knuckles because we, we forgot something in our diaries. We used to publish diaries on the Facebook page, our gal book pages, about what was going on during the week. And we sort of lapsed a bit and forgot to remind everybody that we have a sister station. We do. Yes, Lave Radio. Oh. Orange Sidewinder itself. Now, there is actually an Orange Sidewinder, isn't there? Yeah, where's the station? I, mean, I don't, we don't mean the, the, the error. We mean the actual orange yeah, side. There is one. You can go. You can actually go and fly around it. Yes. 
Have you ever tried shooting it? No. It will tear you a new coming. one. I <laughs> don't trust me. <laughs> it will tear you a new one. If you don't get it in the first pass, that's it. A sidewinder is going to embarrass you thoroughly. But that's over in over in Lave. But we don't suggest you shoot it because that's crime and crime is bad. Exactly. We're we're nice people. We're truckers. We we don't need to do it that way. Or rather, we don't need to get caught doing that. <laughs> don't don't get caught whatever you do because the, the, the cops the cops are vicious over there and in fact there's all sorts of shenanigans going on at the moment there's a couple of um player groups that... david oh sorry to interrupt there is actually no horn sidewinder in live oh, did, did it go it went it went last year oh the, it's, well, they, uh, it's been they, replaced with the bar they the used to be an bar. orange sidewinder but it got turned into an error instead so it's now it's now a bar, okay. Oh, it's a space bar now. Yeah, okay. Well, well, in which case you can't go and get beaten up by their own sidewinder. It's a space bar now. They decided that that violent sidewinders were not their sort of thing. Obviously. No, uh, Mr. Thank you. Kyle be up because it's actually his bar. Yep, and the voice you've just heard was obviously too. DJ Funky Norm, or you are hearing now is DJ Funky Norm, who was teching this week for Live Radio. And we understand that the uh, the post show edit was smoother yes. than a smooth thing. That's just been yes. smooth. It's not been told. It's not been told. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit guilty because obviously I've spent a few weeks trying to do the tech and the the production myself. And ordinarily, sort of Norman does a week on week off kind of thing. So I've, I've kidnapped his seat. So I, I hope you don't mind too much, Norman. Not at all. Not at all. It saves me. I can play World of Warcraft now. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and for, the, for those of you listening, Norman also, at the moment, is the person who does all of our edits. So um, when we upload it to the podcasts and the website, media.forthemug.com, uh, Norman is responsible for removing all of my bloopers and hesitations and yes. the missing bongs and everything and make it sound a little bit tidier than, than we do when we broadcast it out live. And, of course, for the last three weeks, he's had one heck of a mission because um, we've had the five-second lag, which is now gone! <laughs> yes, um, the, the lag... The lag's it's gone. It's easy. It the just shows. It's easy because all I had to. It's just silence. So we just in the pop the silence, and that was it. Oh yeah, yeah. But it makes us sound a little bit more professional. And of course, we sort of relaunched and have reliably been um, doing our our YouTube as well. So we've been uploading the show on a catch again up to uh, YouTube. Just search for the uh, Hutton Orbital over there, and you'll find. I think we've got the last four are now up on YouTube, but. Um, in case you miss it or you have to scarper because you can't listen to the whole show, it is going to be up on YouTube as well. So do feel free to pop along there and have a look. Uh, we're looking at other things we can put up, some maybe some stuff, blast from the past, a few video bits and bobs we can put up there as well over the next uh, few months. Uh, thank you very much to Commander Wotherspoon for curating that one for us. We don't have a Wotherspoon with us this evening, but what we do have, what we do have is an Amelia. Good evening. Hello, Amelia. Now, you, you were saying, oh, I've got more to read this week. Because you, you got yes. bonus articles. <laughs> got bonus articles. One plus one. What, one plus one plus one equals well, one of LCU's three body problems, I think, isn't it? Exactly. So did you read about the Code Warriors? I know you did the article, but did you read about what happened? No, I didn't, actually. Um, what happened? So um, Commander Moxon has actually managed to get the original code from the original Elite. We're talking back in the day, on a tape drive, the original sort of BBC B Elite. I think it was the BBC B version. And he's actually gone through it line by line by line by line and actually reverse engineered all the code to understand what it does. And what does it do? Well, I mean, it's I mean, it is a masterpiece of programming because obviously they squeezed these these eight galaxies because at the time it was jumping around. They divided space into eight and called it eight galaxies. It wasn't. It was all the Milky Way, um, but they divided it up and they had the whole thing and all the ships and all the AI and the graphics and everything in a tape, a very small tape on a computer that had less memory than, well, um, a, a lifetime hippie has after indulging in too much onion head and um i mean how they squeezed all of that into those those tiny little computers back in the day um i have no idea but he's actually going through and reverse engineering it and working out how it was all done as well um and the the blog that uh, commander moxon has published is actually fascinating to read i mean it, it's an insight into how clever uh messrs braben and bell were back in the day to get this in there but um he's actually reverse engineered it and to have a look uh, at how how it was glued together from machine code. Do we have a link to the blog? 
Uh, well, we we can dig it out. I think we did earlier. Um, Palantir. I think we had it when we were assembling things. Yes, I, I can find it. Yeah. Is it death by links in the chat channel now? No, people. They've only got to click on it. It's not asking them to do any work, is it? Anyway, um, but yeah, his um, and it is it is fascinating. I mean, ordinarily, sort of you know, reverse engineering and exposing people's code is is a bit frowned upon. But this is from a long time ago, and it, it um, re really I shows. That... I remember playing Elite on the BBC. Oh, but this guy, because obviously, you know, when, when you program a machine code, to make it super efficient, they, they programmed it in a language and everything is just hexadecimal characters. And for this this uh, character to go through and work out what all those actually mean and how they work is an incredible feat. It's, it's quite a fascinating read. And some of the detective work that's gone in there, um, it, it is like sort of decoding some kind of Rosetta Stone. Um, so it is it's quite fascinating but obviously you know the, the companies we mentioned during during your article the Cal McGrath uh, shipyards shipyards at Lave those were the original shipyards that made the Cobra Mark III that we were all flying and yes they did come with sin pleasure relaxer pads nice I don't know what a sin pleasure relaxer pad is but it sounds I like I can it, imagine what it is it should be installed at Wonders or something I want one <laughs> We, we tell you what, next time we're in touch with the Pilots Federation and we, we talk to the Dastardly Don and some of the community team, we're going to have to ask them to, to speak to uh, Mr. Braben and ask in his head, what did he imagine a sin, pleasure, relax about actually was? And if he says massage chair, I'm going to be massively disappointed. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And of course, the, um, the other one is, of course, Missing Cecil. Well, we did hear from him at the start of the show. Thank you very much, LCU No Fool Like One, who uh, put together a little sketch or, for us. LCU No Fool Like Three. Or LCU No Fool Like Twelve, if you've got double vision. Um, but Cecil has gone missing. Yes, last we heard of him, he'd boarded, I think it was the Ruby Ruby Ruby, over in Colonia. Uar, 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 Uar. And has managed um, to get back, but not really, because nobody's seen him since. So, yes, if anybody has seen Cecil, please do let us know, because he was supposed to be coming back and engineering his ships. But it turns out that he didn't need to. <laughs> that's, that's the funniest thing. He only came back to engineer his ships, but it looks like engineering's now live again. Commander Kinrain, you are, these days, a master engineer. Uh, yes, I was, uh, I was actually out of bruise last night. Um, I was getting my beam laser. You were on a bruise my... cruise, were you? To type. I was. Yes, I was. Um, I was just rearranging the uh, the hard points on my Corvette. Um, Is that a so euphemism? <laughs> so um, I've I've gone over to t turreted uh, for many of them and engineered them to efficient and thermal vent. So loving the engineering. I mean, it, it turns out that now, of course, having come back from Colonia because there was no engineering, um, yes, you can do most of it. You can do your frame shift, your weapons, your shields, everything out there in Colonia now, thanks to Operation Montgomery Scott. Um, what they've been doing is just harvesting all the materials and then just relentlessly hammering these poor engineers with, will you do some stuff to my ship, please? <laughs> oh, go on, do some more stuff to my ship. I know you've done it already, but do some more. Time and time and time again until they unlock, <laughs> I think, 1.6 million different pieces of engineering have now happened wow. over in Colonia out of 1.8 million, which is when they hit 1.8 million, all the engineers over in Colonia are maxed out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, it's been a busy week for news. And they say, oh, it's, it's all dead. We're looking forward to our space legs. And we've been looking at um, some of the new releases from the Pilots Federation as well for the, the Hutton Games from this struggling thing. Commander Palantir, have you seen the struggle? I've seen a brief p bit of it, yes. Have you got nightmares um, and do you have to have therapy now? No, no my age, this is... This is nothing new. This is it's just like just like growing up in the fifties. <laughs> right. Okay. But yes. Yeah, so um, that there is a new publishing arm. So the Pilots Federation have a new publishing arm when they're taking other people's work and they're helping them sort of launch it and promote it a bit. Struggling is one of them. And then this is this other one. And we learned something today when we were putting the script together. We learned something today that it wasn't just a random name, the Lemnis Gate, which is the name of the other new product that they've pulled out of their ear. Uh, Lemnus cut with a cut, not a gut, is actually a thing. It, it is a, a sort of a Mobius loop, isn't it? It's, it's an endless figure eight. So, an, a, a figure eight, like an infinity loop, is a Lemnus cut loop. A mathematical construction. Yep. 
You can, you can look it up in Wikipedia and everything. Yes, um, but it, it's something to do with doing the entire game in little loops of time, and you have to change time and then do it again. Wasn't there a film? Does anybody remember the film? Was, wasn't it a... Um, Oh, what was it? What was it called? Somebody in the somebody in the chat channel is is going to remember the film. What wasn't it with what's his face from Top Top Gun? You know the the little fella. Tom Cruise. Oh, live, um, live, die, repeat. Tom Cruise. Yeah, that was that was the that live that. Tommy was the... Oh, was that a shouty? Yeah, so uh, shouty is in here waiting for his turn to talk to us about important. So you go on then, shouty. What what was the film? I was just joking. I was just saying, tell me you're joking. It's a Tom Cruise. No, uh, I think right. it's Edge of Edge of Tomorrow. I'm edge sure. of Tomorrow. That was it. Where you get to do it, and then you do it again, and then it changes. Then you do it again, then it changes, and you keep doing it like Groundhog Day it. until you get the outcome that you want. Yes. But it sounds fascinating. Anyway, so those are two new things out from the Pilots Federation, and they will be installed in the Hutton Games room relatively soon. Feel free to have a go. Um, Right, let's have a look up at our banter, banter, banter bit in the talky bits. Um, Flossie, would you like to introduce the first topic we're going to talk about this evening and introduce our second special guest? Uh, yeah, um, the first thing we have to talk about is the nominations for the mug, uh, for Muggies. Muggies nominations are now open and we'd like to, and we've invited Shouty to talk about it. Hello, Shouty. Hello, Flossie. Yes, um, well, if everyone was aware, or if you're not aware, last year we did a big award show, and we gave away many awards for many different things, some based off what people have done in the Houghton Truckers, some just based off things that people have done generally throughout the community, and some just because um, they've been part of the community for a long time, like Flossie. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice surprise. <laughs> so, uh, so... What, what we're looking for now is, is um, the nominations. And now, so far, I have had about eight to nine nominations, and they've been very good ones as well. I've even got some for Rookie of the Year, which was one I was thought was going to be a bit of a problem. But actually, it turns out there's been a lot of new players playing this year who have uh, done some quite extraordinary things, like uh, delivering Mug to Sage and Beagle Points and things like that. Especially when especially when they've just started playing the game, it's quite an achievement. So It is, yeah. So do you want to give us well, a, a quick rundown of the, the nomination or the nominees' categories for this year? Yeah, so um, we've had a little bit of a shame this year. Hang on. Open the document up again because it's all here. Drum roll, please. Right, so this year we we decided to turn... We, 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 Amalgamate all of the more stupider categories into what is now going to be the um, Naughty Trucker Award. So, all your sun smashing, all your pancaking, all your um, doing things that aren't 100% truckery, shall we say. Those, so, those tr are truckerish the... naughtiness, not naughty naughtiness. Yeah, truck and naughtiness, that's the sort of thing. We're not, we're not looking for people who are going out murdering people. We're looking for, uh, you know, have you been, you know, has the apology officer needed to make an apology on your behalf sort of naughtiness? Right, so the, the Hutton Oval. So, so, yeah, so, yeah. And, so then we have an award for the combat pilot, who usually it's the one who gets the most combat bonds on the, um, or ten, the most kills. We, we normally look at both and we uh, work out which one is the best combat part of the year. We have Mission Runner. We have the Buck Naked Bee Buy Award, which is basically who, who's we bought the most ship this year. Um, we have a Passenger Award for delivering passengers. And then we start getting on to the more um, specialist one. So we have this Charitable Trucker Award, which we last year went to Mr. Giller. For all his amazing work for doing for special effects, uh, running around and getting all that lovely money for them. Um, then we have our lifetime award, which was Flossy won again. We have a naughty truck with naughty trucker, which I just talked about. The then we have mine of the year, the explorer of the year, our creator of the year, which could go to anybody really if you think they've specially made a, a, a contribution to the show. 
or maybe there's a stream you like to watch, or there's somebody who's, you know, made something that you find completely unusual, then let us know about it. Um, we have the helpful trucker, which one of the, our amazing truckers has gone out of his way purposefully to help as many of you as he can, or she can, should we say? I'm just saying. And um, then we have the trade of the year, who to live for the most trader, and then the truck of the year, which is what we decide we think the truck of the year is, the muggies. And then we have the Trucker's Choice Award, which is what you decide is the best trucker of the year. Right. So, um, obviously, the, the show tradition has gone out at New Year, approximately. So we're scheduled in the... for the first first Hutton show of New Year or a special show? Or yes. what have we got? We've got the 7th of January, which will be the first Hutton show of the New Year. Fantastic. And if people want to go and <clears throat> make their nominations, you don't have to be a Hutton trucker to nominate people. It's nope, from the entire don't. community. It, it's not as a, a little closed echo chamber of Hutton commanders nominate themselves. So um, we're going to be pushing it out there. We're going to start a bit more promo as we go through the year for getting the nominations in. Um, so if you want to go and make nominations, you want to go to what address on the Gal Web? Well, if you would like to go to nomination.forthemug.com forward slash nominate. So nominations.forthemug.com slash nominate or nominate.php, but I think it might just nominations.forthemug.com might go there and you yep. can put your choices in. Can you change your mind once you've submitted? Yes, you can. You can change your mind. You can, you can also, what happens when you submit, it will notify me, it will give me a list of what you've nominated and a little story behind it. It's a story bit that I am more interested in because even if without even if you don't put a category in i can normally pinpoint what category that story is going to go in so it's a story bit that's really important so how you how this person needs a nomination please do not nominate yourself that's not what this is about yeah, you, will about get, you will get disqualified you, you will just get thrown in the recycle bin i'm sorry that's the way it goes yeah the judge's decision is absolutely final and there were some stunning awards last year that obviously the we had the, the muggies themselves went out and the nominees or the shortlist so um loads of people get nominated and then you come up with um as a team a shortlist yes which we, you will then get to vote on yep um, is the vote final, or is the vote sort of amalgamated with the judges' vote as well? Is it is it a bit like celebrity dancing on the ice in the jungle factor, where there's sort of judges and audience vote, or I mean, how how is this arrived at from a transparency point of view? How how's the final well, thing? The what it tends to be is if it's an overwhelming vote, if you know, if say there's sixty people voting and fifty people vote for one person. That person is definitely going to get the award. There's no doubt about it. However, if it's very, very close between all four of them, we will normally have a bit of discussion between ourselves about what the stories say, what you've written about the person, which is the first thing we look at. And then the second find is, is um, what do we think personally? If, it, if it's a tie, you know, if it's a tie, we will literally go on what we just think personally. Right, so it's very, very heavily influenced by the, the audience vote. vote. Um, yes. Yeah, and so later in the year, sort of getting towards the end of the year, I mean, obviously it's still March at the moment because we hit pause in March, but later in the year, um, yes. you're, you're going to close the entries and then open the voting, which will be open for a while, and then you'll close the voting. We've got Christmas to sort of you know eat food, talk amongst ourselves while the judging panel make the decision, and then, yes, the grand announcement is in January. Do people have to make speeches? Well, we we had a goal last year, but we, we, I was thinking if we do this the right way, every single nominator would have to write a winner's speech because they wouldn't be able to know who won. Well, as per uh, as per this year, faking surprise. Oh my God! I've I'd like to thank my mum. I'd like to thank you know the Pilots Federation. I'd like to thank my PC manufacturer or or you know the Xbox. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> yeah. But la last year I did write the, the some of the things for people, and um, we did want you to come on as well if you were around. So I think we will stick with that system, so to speak, because otherwise we could get into some very convoluted territory. Yes, we end up having to proof listen or proof watch all of the all of the uh, acceptance speeches before we're allowed to put them on. Yes. Okay, well, look, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Um, Shouty. One thing I will say is, like last year, we have got some amazing prizes. 
because they've all been, we've all, we've had talk to him, not to him. He, he's quite happy to go ahead and make all the statues. Oh, again. how is the major general? Is it, we haven't heard from him for a while. I haven't spoken to him myself to, for about a month now, so um, it. Uh, so I, I couldn't tell you. But a month ago, he was doing perfectly well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, thank you very much, Mr. Shouty. And obviously, we're looking forward to the next uh, Barnard Star Dockers. Oh, yep. Um, it, it's all in the edit, that again. It, again, it, it, it's come down to um, it's all it's all together. We just want some sound effects that we were struggling to find. And then it just put a big pause on things. So it will be soon. It will be coming out soon. Well, we've got a special tune for you coming up after the banter bit as well. So, uh, you know, do feel free to stay in here and uh, stay tuned for a bit. We're, we're going to uh, move along to a couple of other bits and bobs first. And yep. um, then we'll get to a special tune for you and then in some, into some of the recorded segments for the show. And obviously, you know, keep us up to date with how things are going. If people want to listen to previous episodes of the Barnard Star Dockers as well, you go to bs-dockers. Is it dot com? Yes, .com. So bs-dockers.com, um, but obviously not suitable for, well, just, just not suitable. If you're happy with not suitable, then go listen to bs-dockers.com. Right, next up, I did give him warning that I was coming across to him next. Next up, um, with his mute button, hopefully he's found it this time, um, we've got a message from Baz, Commander Kinrain. <laughs> yeah, I, I did find a mute button this time. I'm going to try and do this bit without getting emotional. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to Commanders WK, Jez and Karumba, who did two brilliant elite live streams this weekend. And they raised over £5,000 for special wow. effect. Um, just a fantastic effort. Um, but I'd also like to extend that a little bit as well. Um, Kit Harrison, who you may know from Frontier. Oh, funny, um, funny, funny individual is Kit. Yeah, Kit is... he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, and he did the latest stage of his grand tour. He's been doing 24-hour uh, live streams, and I think this was stage five or six of his grand tour. Each one he does, each 24-hour live stream he does, he raises money for special effect. And again, on Saturday, he raised, or Friday, Saturday, he raised uh, nearly £1,000 for special effect on that one. Fantastic. And, um, uh, for those of you that um trying to remember desperately who Kit was, in, during the Frontier 24-hour live stream earlier in the year, Kit was doing the Dog's Life segment yep. and running around making the dog poo everywhere, I think, was <laughs> was the highlight. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the week before that, we had a, a, a kind of, he's not a trucker, um, he's actually the leader of the Winged Hussars, Shemek Malacha. Um and he leads a mainly Polish faction, um, and he did a Twitch stream for us. And again, it was it was apparently. a birthday one, wasn't it? It was it wasn't it his own it was, birthday. It was his first. No, it was his first um, first anniversary as a Twitch affiliate. Oh, that was it. So I, I knew it was an anniversary or a birthday or something. Yes, he'd been looking for an excuse to to, to do this since I, I think I met him at LaveCon in 2016. I think it was, and was chatting to him, and it must have just sort of stuck with him, and. Um, this was his uh, opportunity to do it, and he, he did us proud. Absolutely brilliant. And, um, of course, the actual the gaming sort of developing and, the, I mean, the, the, the big, not quite the corporate end of it, has done their, they've done their fundraising this week as well. So a special effect, I think, you've, you know, thanks to community and very generous people this year, managed to sort of keep the wolves at bay, and despite the reduction in fundraising through some of the activities, like like the, uh, you know, the cars going across to Europe and everything, not not happening, you've still managed to keep things going in the meantime through some fantastic yeah. generosity this year. We've we've been really really lucky, and um, obviously a couple of posts were put up about the the corporate side of things, and it is fantastic. Don't get me wrong; it is absolutely fantastic. And it's not as good time. as us, though, is it? It's not as good as the community but, getting involved, really. Well, I don't mean us like Hutton. I mean, I mean, the yeah, the game playing community because we're much more yeah. fun. <laughs> it's 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 in the individual fundraisers, uh, people going out running, people doing live streams, people doing virtual events like virtual ECM has got special effect to where we are now and helping so many people. It's, it's and then, epic, it'll be epic them. good fun too. I mean, it helps <laughs> that we're not just like blindly throwing, we're closing our eyes and throwing money at you and Dr. Mick <laughs> and the team. We're actually having a ruddy good laugh while we're doing it as well. <laughs> exactly. And it'll be you that takes us forward in the future as well. I mean, this is a lovely, lovely, probably a one-off. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll treat it as such. And it's just... Mick has been at great pains to make sure that we really, really hammer home the message is we are no more or less grateful to Mediatonic, the guys that produce four guys, than we are to any other streamer or runner or anybody raising money for us in any other way. Um, 
No, but, I mean, you're, you're massively grateful to everybody, and it, you we, know it's 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 great that the communities we, we get together even during during hard times and and doing so. Talking about getting together, by the way. Talking about getting together, the Baz Banter Bus has been busy all over the place as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, no, uh, in in terms of a short short version of where the Baz Banter Bus has been and what it's doing this week, where was it last week? Uh, last Sunday we were at the Epic Mountain Range in Pomesh Two, where we oh, had high jinks. Oh. It was a it was a laugh. That's um, that's one of those ones. I mean, it's bigger than Olympus Mons, isn't it? I mean, you fly towards the planet, and the planet's got an enormous pimple. I mean, yeah. that's what you can say, an enormous pimple. You can actually see the mountain from orbit. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's and, and so this week, you're off to where? Well, this week, so far, we've been mainly killing pirates um, and running missions over at Hill Pasai. Um Later tonight, I think the boys are going to be doing some mining. And then Sunday, I haven't actually decided where we're going this Sunday night, but it'll be somewhere interesting. But if people want to find out where the banter bus is off to, we go to our gal book, our Facebook uh, page, and just search for anything posted by you or with the banter bus mentioned in it, and there's stuff going on. Everyone's welcome. Everyone is welcome. And, and this week we had a, a really brilliant night where we had four UK truckers and three American truckers all on the same bus. It was a really, really lovely night. In fact, it just brings the, those two... The, it just brings people together, and that's what it was set up for. And that's what we'll carry on doing as long as people want it, enjoying it. Absolutely. Well, we're glad everybody is enjoying it. Um, right, I'm going to go over to another member of the team now for the next one. Amelia. Yes. Now, uh, Commander Wotherspoon, who's not here this evening, has been he very heavily involved with some publications out there in the galaxy. Not just the Galnet Night Digest, not just stuff for us and stuff for Lave Radio, um, but also something else. And there's been a bit of an update from them this week. Sagittarius Eye, and it's out now, issue 28. Um, it is podcast only, um, but the articles include voyages to the galactic limits, stations you've never been to, um, a lone wolf's guide to conflict zones, the de the degenerates, white, white dwarfs, neutron stars, black holes. So they've gone um, a bit sky tonight like we have as well. They've got into the science. It does sound like it, yes. <gasps> But in, in, I was going to say it's in print media, but they've gone from print media to, to podcast only as well. But um, Sagittarius Eye is well worth a read, a look, a view and everything else. It, not only because it includes Commander Wotherspoon's work um, as it has done for ages. I don't know whether it was in this one, but I'm pretty sure he was involved with this one. But because it's just a really good read. Awesome. Or awesome. watch. The, um, correct, the and, correct word is awesome. And, and Flossie. Uh, yeah. If, if you if you and Commander Palantir want to sort of introduce us to the, because this is a community kind of thing. This this last one before we go to the next bit of the show. Right. Yeah, I think right. this is this is. Do you think, Flossie? This is this is Canon's. They're trying to get in here before we get Odyssey and we get our little Dyson sampling thing where you can go around and get stuff on planets. This is a way of making sure you ticked your entire list off of all the possible things out there in the galaxy before we get our legs. Go and see 500,000 light years around the galaxy and see every kind of special thing in the galaxy. Yeah. And then they said that it has come to our attention that not everyone has seen everything we have catalogued. I know bark mounds are fascinating, but for some of you, this that this is all you ever see. So we've created a route from Variety that will let you scan and sample every interesting thing that we hold in our catalogue. Not for the faint of heart, as this trip covers over 500,000 light years, which is further than many of you will have travelled in your entire careers. But you can't all be like Commander Crim Shadow, who has already scanned over 59% of the biological and cloud types in our catalogue. Only oh, yeah. it does sound like a long trip, doesn't it? But, it but does, worthwhile. It? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this because like what... blue mushrooms and then the green mushrooms and then the pink mushrooms yeah. and then the brain yeah. trees, then the other brain trees, and then some more brain trees? If you've got your I Spy book of uh, various <laughs> life, yeah, that takes us back, doesn't it? Your <laughs> I, spy <laughs> book, <laughs> I Spy book of galactic uh, phenomena, then this is one for you to get that. If you were in the Boy Scouts, you'd be able to get your things badge. Special thing badge. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a really good uh, the Canon Challenge. Mm. Yep, and obviously the best place to find out anything to do with um, 
Canon Interstellar is Canon C A N O double N. It's not spelt like the gun; it's spelt like the other one. Um, dot science. Or the, vi- or the vicar. Or the vicar. Yeah. So Canon no 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 C A N O double N dot science is the website. And if you click around in there, but I'm sure you'll find the Canon challenge. I think it's probably linked on their homepage as well. Hey, it's another link. Oh, let me, yeah, let me, let me. Oh. So if we were going to name all our episodes <laughs> these Master days, has done it. this this one is going to be called Death by Links. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I put the Sagittarius Eye link in there as well. Oh, you're a legend! Thank you. Every, everybody's tuned off. That's the Links effect, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, Links, Links Africa. Yeah, God, I remember that. <laughs> Or was it called in Europe? It's called Axe, isn't it? It's not called Lynx, it's called Axe. So for our European friends, we're talking about Axe. Or if you you're get, Mr. You get Shouty. Lynx Africa with Marmite now. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious me. Um, people coming up and licking you. How umami. Yes. Talking of that, we've got Galnet Food Digest coming up as well. We wonder what, what Amelia's been, been tasting. Um, and then, of course, yes, if you're Mr. Shouty, of course, Lynx is most of the west coast of Scotland, apparently. <laughs> and he thinks I don't read these comments as they come past 20 minutes ago. Right. Um, Baz, would you like to... Now, I'm going to just check. I've got all my buttons lined up here as well. Um, would you like to introduce our, our little next bit of the show? This is the Food Digest. Um... Oh, no, no. It's it's in your script. Ah. Ah. <laughs> that bit there. Somebody pointed out to him. Quick, there. There. After, after, after that bit in the script. <clears throat> And now, <laughs> before the assault upon our synapses that is Commander Wotherspoon, we've got a song from the archives. This one's Mugs by Charles Asnaboyce. <laughs> Mugs are just the shape I can't forget. They give me pleasure and regret. Something to treasure, or the price you have to pay. Mugs, maybe the sting that slapping brings, maybe that stain with the coffee rings, maybe a hundred different things to really put you in a daze. Mugs, maybe they're thrown or they're just shoved. Maybe they're hated or just loved May turn each victim to tears or to a mess Mugs may be the anger of my soul The shards lodge up inside your hole Mugs may help you reach your goal Inside your mind I love jumpers almost as much as I love mugs. I wonder if I could put a mug on a jumper. Or even better, I could put a jumper on a mug. Are you writing this down, Michel? Yes, I am all over it, your brunelness, sir. Mugs, they always seem so happy in my hand. Some people say they like them banned I just love to see them when they fly Mugs, porcelain love that will always last I relive my greatest hits of the past That I'll remember till the day I die Mugs are just the reason I survive well, next to jumpers, they're why I'm alive. You have to care for them through the rough and ready years. And I'll, I'll take the handle in my grip and twat the fuckers that give me jip. And if there's tea, I'll take a sip. The meaning of my life is mugs. Oh, mugs! Mugs. Mugs. This 
is a story of determination and steadfastness, of the refusal to give in, of a willingness to go the extra mile. This is a story of wanting to help out the underdog, of hard work and good old-fashioned values. A story of turning the tables against all the odds. A story of four people improving the lives of thousands by their selfless acts. There's a string of deep space settlements on the route between the Bubble and Colonia, the so-called Colonia Connection Highway. One of these settlements is the Eagle's Landing in the Eagle Sector IR-W D1-117. This is right in the middle of one of the densest clusters of stars in the galaxy, with star systems packed far closer together than Hutton Orbital is from Alpha Centauri. Of course, even out in the black, not all commanders are able to steer the path of the righteous. For whatever reason, crimes get committed. Commanders get picked up by the authorities and some of them get taken into custody. It may surprise some to know this, but even out in the middle of nowhere there's still a need for a correctional facility. That facility is in a nearby system to the Eagle's Landing, the Eagle Sector IRW D1-105, and it is the Eagle Sector Secure Facility. There are three factions at the facility. There's the Colonia Council, which has a hand in everything to do with Colonia. There are the prison guards, who are unionised. And there are the prisoners. Now, the prisoners in a secure facility don't have a lot going for them. They don't have a lot of economy going on. And they don't get out to do a lot of sightseeing, but four enterprising and humanitarian commanders, Rainbro, Yachen, Rebel Scum and Hunter's Killers, took it upon themselves to help make the lives of the prisoners of the Eagle Sector more tolerable. They spent hours in the system trawling for those elusive signal sources that would allow them to gradually start to gain the trust of the prison inmates. Slowly, over the months, the prisoners began to ask the commanders if the commanders could take some very secretive VIPs for little trips out from the prison and all the way back to the bubble. It was hugely important that they never got scanned. They were very secretive passengers. The prison guards made a lot of money from the exploration data that was handed in at the station. A series of riots, one after the other after the other, now meant that explorers had to take their exploration data elsewhere. And the influence of the prison guards began to wane. They began to lose their grip on discipline. And then, last week, after a year of slow, methodical, careful preparation, it finally happened. The Eagle Sector inmates made their break. They fought the guards, the guards who in June had had 98% authority over the system. They broke out of their cells, they rioted. They took the prison guards captive and locked them all up. The inmates took over the facility. It hasn't been a clean sweep. The prison guards still control one block of the facility, but they're barricaded in there and they might as well be locked up for all the freedom they have. The system's become a happy-go-lucky anarchy, ruled over by a loose coalition of crime syndicates and anarchists. The few hundred guards barricaded behind heavy metal doors might not be all that pleased, but the vast majority of souls in the facility, and in the system as a whole, are a whole lot happier and more productive. Job done! An excellent outcome, and all as a result of four commanders being willing to just buckle down and get on with it. An inspiring lesson for us all. Next up, the prisoners plan to launch an attack on the Eagle's landing itself, wrest control from the Colonia Council and start charging, visiting commanders to look after their ships and make sure that no bits go missing. But that will be a whole new chapter. Hello. Hello, love. Do you come here often? Every one and a half hours or so. Could I buy you a drink? Ooh, how exciting. So you're a Hutton trucker, are you? That I am, my love. A Centauri Mega Gin Sling, please, bartender. Make that two, please, bartender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Centauri Mega Gin, guaranteed to erase your memory when you've just pulled a large load. Well, I'd like to give my thanks there to Commander Wotherspoon. That was so vivid I could almost have been there. So I don't think I'll bother now. Instead, let's have a short sketch giving the personal story of one of our radio crew. Then we'll go over to Flossie for this week's sports report. It's time for a quick peek behind the curtain. A series showing the lives of our radio crew when they're away from Studio 5. This time it's Lou Snockers. Lou lives a quiet life, partly because Norma won't allow him to say anything, but also because of the trauma he suffered from speaking up at a rally which ended up with him being elected leader of his local faction and the strain of governing wisely has left its toll, given that he is, at heart, a miserable sod. Lou is interested in all sports. He tells us that he does not discriminate at all between them, and that what seems to be his current obsession with women's beach volleyball is just a coincidence. And watching matches in slow motion is just his way of being able to check more easily for foul shots. Lou, like his friend Deb Meet GF, spends much of his time pounding the streets and using his route to draw rude shapes on his fitness tracker maps. Still, if he keeps looking at his watch, at least we'll know what one of his hands is doing. Flossie here with this week's sports results, brought to you by the Hutton Helper. The Hutton Helper puts a spring in your step, brings us news of your feats of galactic athleticism and lets you earn a Hutton decal worth more than any gold medal. Tonight's sports results are for the Stella Long Jump, the Egg Spoon and Cargo Event, the All-In BGS Mission District Wrestling, the Marquess of Queensbury turning in her Grave Challenge trophy and the Special Spectators Award. The Stella Long Jump was a whitewash this week as Bowler Petunia smashed Chasimage into second place by a comfortable margin. The Egg, Spoon and Cargo event was a three horse race with Montgomery Python just managing to keep his neck out in front as Serata and Christopher Hankey jostled against the railings to vie for supremacy, with the result that second and third place will be awarded after a steward's inquiry. The All In BGS Mission District Wrestling was dominated by Freaky Eyes, who benefited from the absence of Montgomery Python as the Python's leotard was in for a wash, and it seems that Millstone Barn and Kilden Shadow had decided to wait until Freaky Eyes had demolished all of the other contenders and then had a not at all convincing final bout with each other, slapping the canvas and bouncing off the ropes. The audience... Uh, the audience for the Marquess of Queensbury turning in her Grave Challenge trophy was treated to a magnificent display of bloody noses and broken bodies as Alex Zuno made a necklace from discarded pirate paraphernalia and ended top of the table with more than twice the score of his nearest rival, Attic 2. Not since the opening of Trumpton Fire Station has such a great event started with Pew Pew. The spe Special Spectators Award was a close run thing this week, with 67 mistake knots just beating Yurina Yoshida by 82 passengers, two falls and a Yahtzee. An impressive week of sport there and we congratulate you all. In summary, the classified results are as follows. 
Ball of Petunias, 103,000. Shattermage, 77,000. Montgomery Python, 27,000. Christopher Hankey and Sarata, Sarata, less than 27,000. Freaky Eye, 782. Everyone else, not even close. Alex Uno, 241 million. Attic 2, 96 million. 67 Mistake Knot, 1,249. Yurina Yoshida, 1,167. With the winners, please bring their tracing paper and black heel ball to Alvin's office where they can take a rubbing of the Hutton decal and give a rubbing to Alvin's belly. Thank you, Flossie. <clears throat> and now it's time for another one of our long-loved, long-missed adverts. Um, this week, I think it's possibly the Fuel Rats. This is a public service announcement from the Fuel Rats. Please stop what you're doing and pay attention. If we can rescue you, we will. But you can help us help you by following these easy steps. 1. Fly 50 light seconds or so from the system's main star and drop out of supercruise. 2. Note down the current system and the nearest stellar body. 3. If you're on emergency life support, log out immediately. 4. Go to FuelRats.org and click Get Help. 5. Stay calm, hold your breath, and let our seasoned professionals do what they do best. The Fuel Rats. We have fuel, you don't. Any questions? This is Amelia Hawke reporting for the Galnet Food Digest. We try the galaxy's rarest and most dangerous foods, so you don't have to. This week, I've headed for the aerial system and the planet Shangjun to discover the story behind Eden Appen apples of Ariel. Shangjun, on final approach, appears very similar to Earth. It is lightly terraformed has gravity very similar to its cousin in Sol, has a single moon, Tyree, and from space you can see the landmasses, expanses of water and fluffy white clouds. Landing on the planet itself, you're taken within the starport and look out of your biome over a beautiful landscape. The plants are shorter than what you're used to on Earth, but the leaves are broad. Talking to the locals, there are some major differences. The atmosphere contains only about one-tenth the oxygen of Earth, and the atmospheric pressure is slightly, or well, significantly, I should say, higher. A year is over 700 days long, and a day lasts 176 standard Earth days. On the face of it, an idyllic Eden to look at, but utterly inhospitable to human life without your trusty remlock. However, it's here that early settlers discovered a fruiting plant covered in something that appears to be apples. With such long days, each day has a pair of seasons. The life cycle of the plants aligns with the day cycle. Shedding leaves before nightfall, growing new ones at daybreak, and as the sun sets, moving back into full autumn and a harvest. When we think of apples, we think of rosy reds, vibrant greens. We think of gentlemen of small stature, wringing their hands over the fate of a pretty lodger that came to stay with them. We think of summer glasses of cider, of strong liquor, phrases such as, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. 
Early settlers soon discovered that all that glistens is not gold. And these apples have a silver color to them. And indeed, before the terraforming were toxic in the extreme. Delicious, tempting, but deadly. Over time with the terraforming, the trees were selectively bred to produce the, to reduce the toxicity. And in modern times, the apple is a sweet, juicy, delicious fruit with a silvery hue. It isn't a true apple and the flavor is distinct from its earth originated cousin, but it's similar enough. Eat an unripe one and you're assaulted by a sour flavor that has your face pinched involuntarily. Overripe and they're mushy and mildly alcoholic. Many a herd animal on the planet has been seen staggering around in late autumn sunset light, bumping into scenery and telling all its friend in loud voices that it really, really loves them. With the low oxygen on the world, the trees are slow growing, enjoying a very sedate lifestyle until they mature and begin flowering and producing fruit. Low hanging as it is, it's easy to harvest. The name Eden, evoking thoughts of idyllic gardens, mostly covered by fig leaves, was given to the apples, but not for the reasons that you think. Whilst indigenous animals appear immune to the toxicity of the original plant, the growths have developed their own population of snake-like creatures who wait for passing animals to eat one before poisoning them and slowly devouring them like lampreys. These creatures persist through modern times, so the Eden link? Beware the asp, beware temptation, or end up as a tasty morsel. Locals, however, farm and harvest the fruits turning them into old-fashioned apple pie, astonishing silver tartata that's the envy of celebrity chefs everywhere and, of course, enjoying a good turnover in summer. So time for my summary. I've arrived at just the right time in the cycle and the ones I've tasted are fresh, juicy and sharp in flavour. The rarity comes from the long life cycle and, of course, the limited orchards. Are they worth it? Well, the glass of Eden apple cider I've just had says yes, definitely. As for the danger, if you've read your Sherlock Holmes, you'll know about the taste of bitter almonds, the, the cyanide. Whilst the fruit is delicious and safe to eat, for those that enjoy scuffing the whole thing, including the core, the pips of this plant are frighteningly deadly. In just one, and you've got about 20 minutes before your muscles all give up and you'll end up dying with a sweet taste in your mouth and just a hint of the bitter almonds that tells you exactly how badly you just messed up. Oh, and if a dodgy looking asp seems to be telling you to tuck into a wild one, don't be fooled. Just look all innocent and walk on by and don't start wondering why snakes are talking to you. It's probably just the strength of the alcohol. This is Amelia Hawke from the Galnet Food Digest. Having tried another of the galaxy's most rare and dangerous foods, I've got a bottle of Eden schnapps on my desk. The locals are all wearing nothing but fig leaves, and I'm looking forward to taking the rest of the evening off. Next week, I'll be leaving this very Eden and heading somewhere equally fruity. Neritus to sample the berries. Thanks there to Amelia. That potential bitterness does explain why apple is known as the most litigious fruit in the galaxy. Now, we're moving on to another of our educational slots, and it's coming up time for the sky tonight. And tonight, episode four is about novae, or like novas, but more correct. But before that, a quick word from our sponsors.
it appears that the circus has arrived in Alpha Centauri and the residents of Alvin Prospect are being treated to a parade before the circus itself starts. Here comes the procession now. There are gaudily painted ships of all sizes and shapes gathering at the station, piloted by commanders with crazy hair and big red noses. I mean, really big and really red. A clown ship appears, each panel painted a different colour. Suddenly bits start falling off, thruster panels, then engine covers and hatches all float off into the void, followed by other components until there is just a commander in a flight chair. High above us we can see acrobats whirling their ships in eccentric patterns round one another, weaving intricate shapes with their contrails. An SRV appears from somewhere and drives along ship hulls at breakneck speed, using thrusters to leap from ship to ship in a wall of death-themed act of bravery. He's... Wait, no! He's missed his jump and gone flying off into one of the acrobats. And now they've collided. I can see their hull plates buckling. They really do fly without safety shields. The SRV is still intact and has been batted off towards the station. He's using his thrusters but to limited effect. Oh no, he just hit one of the defence turrets. Every gun on the station is opened up now as auto defence systems registered the crashing SRV as a missile. Every ship in the cavalcade is being torn to pieces and their contents spilled into the cold embrace of space. Oh, the humanity. It is quiet now. The guns have stopped, leaving a debris field floating between us and the station. The locals avert their eyes, traumatised and ashamed by the orgy of destruction they have just witnessed. The circus is over. There are no more clowns and... What? Really? False alarm, folks. Turn out, it was just a normal hotbox event. This is a staff announcement. Would floor mopping guy please report to the hotbox offices urgently and bring your big bucket. Good evening and welcome once again to the sky tonight. I'm Sir NAT and as always I'm here to guide you through the skies around Hutton as well as the science, sights and sounds of the galaxy we call home. As ever I have with me to help educate, entertain and extirpate our correspondent from Whoop North, the supremely down to Hutton, the Norman Ninja himself, Norman Ski. Hello everyone. This week we'll be talking about Novi. What are they? How do they come about? And why aren't they super? So... What does it all mean? Uh, he's supposed to say that. Hi. What does it all mean? Novi are transient astronomical events that cause the sudden appearance of a bright, apparently new star that slowly fades over several weeks or months. Causes of the dramatic appearance of Nova vary depending on the circumstances leading up to the event itself. All observed Novae so far have involved a white dwarf in a closed binary system. The main subclasses of Novae are classical, recurrent and dwarf Novae. They are all considered to be cataclysmic variable stars. Sounds a bit like our Cecil and Lyle when you think about it. Classical Nova eruptions are the most common type of Nova. They are likely created in a close binary star system with a white dwarf and one of either a main sequence star or a subgiant or a red giant star. When the orbital period falls in a range of several days to one day, the white dwarf is close enough to its companion star to start drawing accreted matter onto the surface of the right dwarf. 
which creates a dense but shallow atmosphere, similar to that experienced in the talking shops at Pilots Federation. <laughs> this atmosphere, mostly consisting of hydrogen, is thermally heated by the hot white dwarf and eventually reaches critical temperature, causing ignition of rapid runaway fusion. This sudden increase in energy expels the atmosphere into interstellar space, creating the envelope seen as visible light during the Nova event and previously mistaken as a new star. Few Novae produce short-lived Nova remnants, lasting for perhaps several centuries. The current Nova processes are the same as the classical Nova, except that the fusion ignition may be repetitive because the companion star can again feed the dense atmosphere of the white dwarf. Novae most often occur in the sky along the main plane of the galaxy, especially near the observed galactic centre in Sagittarius. However, they can appear anywhere in the sky. Novae occur far more frequently than galactic supernovae, averaging about 10 per year. Astronomers had estimated that the galaxy experienced roughly 30 to 60 novae per year. But in the early 21st century, further examination revealed the true figure to be nearer 10 possibly due to distant novae being obscured by gas and dust absorption. Roughly, 25 novae are brighter than about the 20th magnitude are discovered in the Andromeda galaxy each year, and smaller numbers are seen in other nearby galaxies. In the early 21st century, it was estimated that 407 probable novae were recorded in our own galaxy. Since the wider exploration of the galaxy, this number has increased due to a greater dispersal of observation points with the current figure standing at around 5,500 novae in our galaxy. Most novae are found telescopically, perhaps only one every 12 to 18 months reaching naked eye visibility from the bubble. Novae reaching first or second magnitude, as seen from the bubble, occur only several times per century. Historians in the 20th to the 22nd centuries on Earth have, in obscure papers, noted frequently the presence of the Vauxhall Nova in the Luton system and the Terra Nova in the Fox Channel system. The current state and location of these novae is not clear due to the ambiguous record keeping surrounding the East Penicular Novae. Some novae leave behind visible nebulosity, material expelled in the Nova explosion or in multiple explosions. Examples of these could be potentially visited, such as GK Psi, which went nova in 1901, or Tau Pixidis, which is approximately 15,600 light years from bubble. The first nova observed from onset to completion was V1974 Cygni, also known as Nova Cygni 1992, which was observed to be around 10,000 light years from Earth at the time of discovery. Recurrent novae such as Iris of Fiuchi, those with periods in the order of decades are rare. Astronomers theorise, however, that most, if not all, novae are recurrent, albeit on timescales ranging from thousands to tens of thousands of years. The recurrence interval for a nova is less dependent on the accretion rate of the white dwarf than on its mass. With their powerful gravity, massive white dwarfs require less accretion to fuel an eruption than lower mass ones. Consequently, the interval is shorter for high mass white dwarfs. In the early 21st century, 2020, astronomers reported that classical novae explosions are the galactic producers of the element lithium. So if you ever feel depressed, make your way to the nearest novae system and drink in the atmosphere. More ways than one. We hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Last week we promised you an explosive episode this evening, but we changed it around at the last minute to make more sense over the series. Next week's episode will truly be explosive. I promise, on our in box, that this will happen. Until next week, I've been Sir N.E.T. And I've been Gargantuan. Hey, he's been Gargantuan. No, he's been Norman Ski. I'm sure this is not right, everybody. <clears throat> I'm learning something every single week. It never occurred to me that the supernovae, there'd be ordinary novae. Are there subnovae? Little ones. Little, little baby. No, there's, there's, there's got to be a certain size for the reaction to happen, isn't there?
Well, yes. I mean, you, you can't just we're just going to name all of them supernovae. There's got to be a you know an ordinary one to make the rest of them spectacular. I'm going to have sort of on the scale of one to ten, how super is your nova? <laughs> nova. Yes. Who, who was commenting on the Vauxhall nova earlier? Uh, it was the apology mm. officer. Mm-mm. on the ticker tape thank you very much the apology officer right well that brings us towards the end of the show we'll just check in with the announcer once again this is a passenger announcement the 1030 shuttle to eden which was due to depart from b2 will now depart from b1 passengers are asked to disembark and move to the shuttle at pad one well there we go Totally. Right. Well, thank you very much to all of our guests and presenters for this evening. Uh, we're going to have a quick closing line from absolutely everybody. Uh, Amelia, your thought for the evening? For the mug. And Flossie? For the mug. Commander Kinrain? For the mug. I sense a theme here. Commander Palantir? I am very much in favour of drinking vessels. <laughs> mug shaped ones with handles. <laughs> oh, um... Oh, oh, you mean there are others? Oh, yes. No, other, the other ones are big ones with gin and icing. And obviously, thank you very much Look. to the entire writing and uh, production team for this evening. Thank you very much to Commander Snoz and happy birthday once again. That sketch at the start of the show was specially for you, as written by LCU, no fool like one. Thanks to the LCU and to Commander Wotherspoon for yet another insight into the goings on in the galaxy. Um, yes, I mean, basically to everybody for helping put this together. We will be back next week, uh, same time, approximately. Same place, definitely. With no lag, hopefully. And um, other than that, we only have one tune left for the evening, and it's become a tradition now. Um, I didn't change it from last week, because I love this version as well. So, uh, good night, everybody, and a big, uh, hearty uh, For the Mug. For the Mug! For the Mug! For the Mug. Journey too long, no cargo too small Profit margins never really mattered at all We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today Super cruising all across the Milky Way We're taking anything, anytime, anywhere Loading all the teen out to the brim with the rest for the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Yeah, everybody's seen the trucker song. Flossie always seems to crash into the sun Skip all eyes to pilot on the Xbox One Helping out the free, you know, leads us well Truck across the galaxy, now everybody yeah For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from for the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the and Chucker song. For the more, for the more, for the more. You know just where we're coming from. For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the and Chucker song. Give me a large path that I can land on And I'll give you cargo and sing you my song 
No point twenty two light years to go. Cruising to work, oh, 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 oh. No journey too long, no cargo too small. The profit margins never really mattered at all. We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today. Super cruising all across the Milky Way. We're taking anything, any time, anywhere. So shout it out loud, loud. You don't even care for the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. For the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the Joker song. For the more, for the more, for the more. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. For the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the Joker song. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the show. Everybody's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too?